Hello and welcome to the Gribbly's Folly definitive shootout and review of two classic tobacco blends, Carter Hall and Chatham Manor. These two blends go head to head in the marketplace because Chatham Manor, of course, is a ripoff of Carter Hall. But we're going to have to be careful with how we use the word ripoff because Chatham Manor is thought by many, especially its own blenders, to be the superior tobacco. Carter Hall, of course, needs no introduction, and we've talked about it a lot on the channel, so we're not going to get into the history here, but it's from, I don't know, some famous old tobacco blender. John, mid, John, uh, it's, it's from Warning Contains Nicotine. That's the blender. Because Pipes and Cigars is responsible for Chatham Manor, and they sell both tobaccos, I will look at them as neutral marketing grounds to read the description for Carter Hall. Here we go. Uh, Carter Hall is a benchmark for OTC, that's over the counter for those of you just getting into things, for OTC tobacco mellow burleys are cross cut and blended with some flake cut Virginias and finished with a subtle top note. The cool smoking blend has been part of it, but we don't care. The point is, this is the tobacco, and in my personal history with Carter Hall, this is the tobacco that I go to when I just want a good, reliable smoke that's not, I'm not trying to be a connoisseur, I'm not trying to taste all the subtleties and like, oh, I can, oh, I can detect a hint of smokiness from this province in this Middle Eastern country. That's not what Carter Hall is about. Carter Hall is a codger blend. It's the kind of blend that you can smoke while mowing your lawn or sitting in your easy chair while watching Mama's Family reruns. Pipes and Cigars has a house brand called Hearth and Home. Stop it with the crickets. Stop it with the crickets. Why do, why do we have to be so noisy? I'm shut up. Shut, shut up, shut up. Now Pipes and Cigars has a house brand called Hearth and Home. And Hearth and Home has a series called Midtown. And Midtown contains a tobacco called Chatham Manor. The Pipes and Cigars description does not call out Carter Hall by name, but it says Chatham Manor is part of a new affordable lineup. So there again, going right for the OTC crowd. This pipe tobacco is smooth and mellow blend of white burley and Virginia with a light, pleasant vanilla bourbon top note a less costly alternative to some other favorite blends, Chatham Manor Tobacco is a worthy addition. When I returned to pipe smoking after a bit of a hiatus, I discovered that my palate had sort of reset itself and I was now no longer attracted to the super manly strong English blends of yore. I wanted something a little milder to get back into the game. And I had previously enjoyed Carter Hall in the past. I had done the Codger Challenge and I had tried to smoke only Carter Hall for a while just because it's such a simple benchmark blend. And upon getting back into things, the Galdieri family sent me a 55 gallon crude oil drum full of Carter Hall. Seriously, I'll never be able to smoke it all. Thank you so much, John et al. But I wanted to give something back to the community. So I bought myself some Chatham Manor with the intention of making a head to head review. I want to do the hard work and put these two tobaccos to a scientific test I'm gonna go through my methodology. I'm gonna talk about everything that I have done so that you don't have to, because I care about you. But I racked my brain about good methodology for this. And then the other night, my wife and I were sitting by a fire and you know, she doesn't really smoke, but she was kind of along for the ride. So I made her a pipe with some aromatic tobacco in it. And then I made myself a pipe with some you know, strong ass English in it. And we, I, we were kind of sharing these pipes and I would say, hey, what do you think of this tobacco? Does it have a, does it have a spicy top note? Does it have an earthy base note? And she was like, it just kind of tastes like tobacco. So I switched, I gave her mine. I was like, okay, what do you, this is like, this is like connoisseur tobacco. What do you think of this? And she was like, I can't really tell a difference. You can't tell a difference. What? This is our whole identity here on this channel is, is the tobacco we smoke. What do you mean you can't tell a difference? But I realized in this process that I was tasting the differences in all these tobaccos. I was switching back and forth. I had never smoked two pipes at the same time before. Boom, Eureka, that is how I am going to do my test. I am going to load up two identical pipes with Carter Hall and Chatham Manor and smoke them head to head. Because we're talking codger tobaccos, I thought it only appropriate to smoke them in codger pipes. These are Missouri Meerschaum legends. They're dirt cheap. We're codgers. We're on fixed incomes. In all seriousness, it's important to note that the barrier to entry to pipe smoking is a pouch of Carter Hall. Actually, you can't get it in the pouch. That's another thing I should mention here. One thing Carter Hall does not have going for it is that it no longer comes 
in a luxury pouch. It used to be a thing. You could go to any grocery store in the United States and probably its territories and get a luxury pouch of Carter Hall for like $2. Not so anymore. You gotta buy the big jug or, or you can go to Pipes and Cigars and get Chatham Manor for a couple bucks. So let's talk about this methodology here. I have two identical Missouri Meerschaum Legend corn cob pipes. Now, they, you know, are obviously used. And I think that's important here. I, don't, I wouldn't want to start with a new pipe. I want to start with a pipe that is broken in. Uh, will it have some ghosting from other blends? Sure. What pipe doesn't, unless it's brand spanking new? I did actually ream these pipes out a little bit with my pocket knife, because I'm a codger, and I put brand new shiny amber stems on them just to try to limit the ghosting, but, you know, I had both of these pipes for years and years, as you can tell. Uh, this one was my original legend that I got in like 2016 on this channel, it has seen its share of Carter Hall. And then this one was a second that somebody sent me. It used to have an X on the bottom. You can barely see it. It was a, I, who knows what was wrong with it that Missouri Meerschaum thought that it wasn't like top shelf $5 pipe quality. Uh, anyway, I believe, it is my belief that there are no two pipes in my collection that would smoke as identically as these two. Now again, because these are codger blends, we are going to use codger methods. There will be no cedar strip lighting. There will be no pipe loading rituals. We're gonna take a plastic bag and we're gonna stick the pipe in it and we're gonna load it up. Just so you can be privy to the methodology of this extra scientific test, uh, you know, you do have to have a little bit of tamping and there are differences in the mechanics of these tobaccos. The Chatham Manor is much more of a ribbon cut than the shag of Carter Hall, and so it is a little bit different to load. You can see the Carter Hall, much less of an ordeal. It's like playing with sand, it's a playground. All right, we've got these two pipes loaded up identically, and now I'm going to light them. I don't know if I can, this is a little difficult here. Okay, new plan, let's just try it like normal, shall we? I have noticed that both of these tobaccos are excellent burners and they rarely require a false light. However, because of all my shenanigans, I think I'm going to have to light this one again. So we'll give it a little tamp here and we should be good to go. All right, impressions on a first light. <clears throat> there is a dryness to Chatham Manor and the flavors, uh, I have to look for them a little bit. They're in there, but they don't, they don't like, you know, jump out at you. Huh. All right, let's switch over. Carter Hall, here we go. So the first thing I notice is that the draw is more open on the Carter Hall pipe. Now that could be a function of the pipe, but I suspect it's actually a function of the tobacco being less dense. I think that the Chatham Manor tobacco, I don't know if it's dense or if it's just constricting the airway more. But I mean, these pipes are exactly the same. There is the exact same volume of tobacco. You know, we can get even more scientific with this, hang on. Okay, I just went upstairs and I stood on my bathroom scale while holding each pipe and they both weigh over 350 pounds. So that's a lot of tobacco in there. I was not expecting this, but I think the flavors of the Carter Hall are actually even more subtle than the Chatham Manor. It, it, it um, maybe they're just different. There, it's, there's a sweetness that the Chatham Manor doesn't quite nail. And, and, and this is just in the first light, but there's a sweetness there, um, but it's even harder. You got to look for it a little bit more. This is interesting and unexpected. I think that the Carter Hall is the less impactful tobacco. It doesn't have the body of Chatham Manor, huh? But these, of course, are just first impressions on the first light. And as we know, the character of a tobacco changes as you smoke through the bowl, especially Carter Hall. That's one of its weaknesses, by the way. We'll get to that in the wrap up. But what I'm going to do to make sure that our test is foolproof, ironclad, I'm not going to rely on these first impressions. I am going to change my hat so that my viewers will not realize I'm recording two videos at the same time. And I'm going to record a Sunday antisocial. And through that process, because that's when I mostly smoke my pipes, right? And through that process, I will be able to get a better read on the full bowl of the tobacco. I'm going to smoke these pipes interchangeably, and I'll be back in just a minute. Good morning and welcome to another Gribbly's Folly Sunday anti And we're back. Okay. I have been in my garage talking to a camera for several hours now. Uh, so, key takeaways. 
Uh, I was smoking these pipes interchangeably in my Sunday antisocial, uh, and I think I'm going to call it something like uh, Hard Work and Murphy's Law. So if you want to go see the experience of smoking these bowls down uh, most of the way, uh, you can go watch that. Um, key takeaways. After a little bit, I forgot that I was smoking two different tobaccos. That's how similar these tobaccos are. You really have to look for the differences. I was That was going to be my initial guess of how this would go. Uh, but then after after I did the first part of the video and I really detected a lot of difference, I was like, oh, no, this is, they're, they're very different. But then if you're focusing on something else, if you're talking to people, if you're, if you're expressing yourself creatively, you won't even notice. I haven't actually paid attention to which pipe I have been smoking. Uh, I'm going to guess this is Carter Hall and this is, uh, this is uh, Chatham Manor. Hey, I was right. So we're, we're a good two thirds of the way through both of these bowls. Let's, uh, let's relight and reassess. Carter Hall. Carter Hall, as I have often uh, discussed, uh, it, loses, it loses flavor as you get toward the bottom of the bowl. However, Carter Hall has remained sweet. There is definitely a sweetness in the, sort of in the upper palate, in the nose. Uh, there, there is a sweetness that I think is probably, let's be honest here, it's probably mostly the top note. And, that, and that, I think that's consistent with what we know about Carter Hall, which is that, is it really the nicest tobacco? No. You're, you're not gonna be tasting the quality leaf. It is there, I, I don't think it's bad leaf, but I, I think that, um, it is mostly a delivery system for uh, a very pleasant, subtle top note. And if you followed me for any length of time, this is this will be contradictory because I I disparage uh, aromatics uh, quite a bit. I, I like tobaccos that are about the tobacco, um, but it's not a delivery system in the sense that like Captain Black Cherry is basically like. You know, you want to drink a cherry Coke, but in, but in the form of smoking a pipe, that's Captain Black Cherry. This, it's you're still smoking a pipe. You're still participating in um, the ritual and the taste of tobacco, and it's just incredibly unobtrusive. I, I, the, if if I noticed a difference uh, in my in recording my other video, it was when I when I would light one pipe because uh, I was switching out with each light. Every time I would stop and talk, my pipes would go out. I would I would pick up the other pipe, and I did notice differences on the on the light. Uh, I assume it was the Chatham Manor. Um, it's just a little more forward. It's a little stronger, and I think it is. This is Chatham Manor. I think it is the Burleys that are more forward in the Chatham Manor. I think that there's a um, ashy in a good way taste of Burley. Um, Burley to me has always tasted like what I would imagine tobacco to taste like. If I didn't know, there was a long time in my life where I never smoked tobacco. I didn't start smoking a pipe until I was 30 years old. But I grew up where uh, tobacco was grown and it was mostly Burley. And so I would be around tobacco uh, in the fields and in barns and Chatham Manor more so than Carter Hall, both of them, but Chatham Manor more so tastes like if I could go back it to teenage gribs, what, what do you think smoking a pipe full of burley would be? That's what Chatham Manor is like. And I think that's good and bad. It lacks the sweetness of Carter Hall. Carter Hall is definitely the sweeter blend. Now that I'm paying attention to it again, when I focus on it, I think that there are pretty significant differences between these tobaccos. So um, again, it comes back to purpose. If you want a tobacco, that you really want to taste, I would probably suggest the Chatham Manor. I think it's, I think it is the superior tobacco. The constituents are probably of higher quality. It's probably blended better. It, it looks like a nicer tobacco. That's a pretty hefty ribbon cut. That's, that's almost Dunhill quality ribbon cut. But the Carter Hall is crumbly by nature. There's no part, there's, you know, there's not a piece of Carter Hall that is, you couldn't find a piece of leaf that is more than uh, an eighth of an inch long in there. And so that suggests to me that Carter Hall is probably, uh, from a connoisseur point of view, the inferior tobacco because they've cut it up more. You don't really know 
it's hard to look at it and say, oh yeah, that's some bright leaf and that's some dark leaf. And yeah, it's just kind of a, it's kind of a pile of tobacco. Uh, the, the Chatham Manor, uh, more care has gone into the processing. But the Carter Hall burns better, for sure. It, uh, it is absolutely the superior smoker in terms of the mechanics. Uh, does that matter? It probably does if you're sitting in your armchair uh, and you just don't want to have to think about it. However, I am, now that I'm down to the end of this bowl, I am finding the Carter Hall lack of flavor. Toward the, that, that last quarter bowl, I usually just dump it out. It, it's, there's not much to it. And I don't know if that's the top note has, has, uh, has burned away. I don't know why that is. That just doesn't really happen with a lot. I mean, there's definitely like, you get to the point with any tobacco where you're just kind of relighting ash. Um, but this is like, there's definitely still combustible material in there. Uh, it's just not very enjoyable. So here is the definitive Gribbley's Folly decision on these tobaccos. It's purpose driven. If you are a connoisseur and you really enjoy Burleys and want an affordable Burley to smoke all day, Chatham Manor is your tobacco. It's definitely more Burley forward. It's definitely higher quality. It has consistency all the way down the bowl. However, if you just want something mild and enjoyable and pleasant that doesn't take a lot of maintenance throughout the bowl, I think Carter Hall is the winner. I think you should get a bigger pipe than a legend because you'll have more uh, uh, smoking experience before you get to that last quarter of the bowl that's not so great. Uh, I think you should temper your expectations. It's not going to be a tobacco that just bowls you over with all kinds of exotic flavors, but it's perfect if you're a codger doing codger. What do codgers do? If you're, if you're fishing at the carp pond while your wife plays bingo in the pavilion, Carter Hall is your choice. If you are neither of these and you're just a new tobacco smoker or you're just, you're just somebody that likes to try tobacco, I think you can't go wrong with either. And again, as I have mentioned, if you're, if you're occupied, if you're doing something, you're not going to notice the difference between these two tobaccos unless you notice you probably have to relight Chatham Manor a little bit more. And when you get to the bottom of the bowl on Carter Hall, it's not going to be as pleasant. Lastly, I will point out that I am very sensitive to nicotine and I don't feel any nicotine hit. Uh, and I've been smoking two pipes full of tobacco like a freight train as I've been making pipe videos here. I think that uh, it's safe to say that neither of these is going to knock you off your feet. Bottom line, two thumbs up for two tobaccos. I think they're both great for what they are. Will I buy either of them again? Well, I didn't buy Carter Hall to begin with. I will not be buying any tobaccos of this genre until I get through that giant tub that John Galdieri sent me because it, it serves the purpose. It, it, is, it is the all day smoke uh, that I want when I reach for one of these tobaccos. Uh, when I have to buy something again, I will probably buy Carter Hall again, to be honest. Although I would do the math. I would sit there and say, well, do I want to buy the whole jug or do I, you know, it, it would come down to which is cheaper maybe. And that is all I have for you. I hope you have enjoyed and found useful this review of Carter Hall and Chatham Manor. I certainly enjoyed making it and it was very illustrative. I think it's all in our head. I think most of the stuff is psychological and it comes down to what you prefer and what gives you comfort and what makes you reach for your pipe. Why do you reach for your pipe? That's the real question. Thank you for watching. Keep the ends out for the ties that bind.